It's been one of my favorite moments in seven string history for several decades now, but for some reason I've never learned a lick of it. And that's probably because it's harder than kicking water uphill. But on today's video, it's my solemn vow to put a dent in acid rain by Liquid Tension Experiment. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy Uncle Ben and allow me to introduce you to the inspiration for this video. It is this gorgeous new Ernie Ball Music Man JP15 7 string that I just got from the fine folks over at Sweetwater. I've been a huge Petrucci fan for a long time and I've always wanted one of his signature guitars. So whenever I saw that Sweetwater got this JP15 7 string in this beautiful exclusive sapphire iris finish that you can only get from the folks over there at Sweetwater. I knew I had to have it. Look how beautiful that thing is. I believe the term you're searching for is, oh my goodness gracious. So funny story, I actually sat down today to make a video about my favorite John Petrucci seven string moments. And the first one that came to mind for me was Acid Rain off of Liquid Tension Experiment 2. And that's when I realized that in all my years of seven string playing, I've actually never learned how to play that song. So I started trying to figure it out and immediately got my ass whooped a little bit. It's really an obstacle course of a riff, so I thought I'd bring you guys along for the journey as I try to conquer this legendary riff. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benelderguitars. Sign up today, even for just a buck a month, you're gonna get access to a ton of goodies like bonus videos, backing tracks, downloadable tabs, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel is going to get access to a very special, super extended version of this video with even more information in it, as well as ad-free presentation. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise, for today's video, I'll be using this Bad Larry JP-15, and I've got that plugged into the Fractal Audio Axe FX3, and I'm going to be using some of the stock John Petrucci signature presets that he made on there. Now let's get riffing. So this tune is in the key of B minor. It is about 144 BPM according to the interwebs. And the main figure in it is this 16th note bass thing with all these open string pull-offs. Sounds kind of like this. And it has a few different endings tagged onto it. It kind of goes through in an A, B, A, C kind of construction. So when I say that, I mean that section A is that riff with this ending. Section B has a little minor pentatonic run at the end of it. Then we go back to section A. And then finally, the C section is how the doctor delivered the baby. <laughs> oh. It's going back to that first lick, and then there's this crazy position shifting lick at the end of it. Every one of those sections presents its own challenges, and we're going to talk about that as we go along here. But first things first, let's talk about the main kind of meat of the riff, that open string pull-off thing. So whenever you're playing on a tone that has a lot of gain and you're using a ton of open strings in your riffs, it can become a noisy mess really fast. That there is noisier than two skeletons dancing on a tin roof, and we don't want that. So first things first, you got to control the ring of those open strings. We're going to do a little bit of palm muting back here at the back. just to naturally shorten up the decay of those strings. It makes it sound a lot tighter right away. But even with the palm muting going on back there, you can still get a lot of unwanted string noise. That's just not really as articulate as we want it to sound. So one little trick that I found fingering wise that helps a lot is to use my second and third fingers to play the riff. And you'll notice my first finger here is kind of doing some on and off dampening. Check it out. So 
So it's a little hard to describe here, but essentially what's going on is every time my middle or ring finger frets the note, you'll notice my kind of straight first finger here comes down and kind of dampens behind the fretted note. You can really tell right there with the first two notes of the riff. So whenever we play that first section, we're gonna do a little bit of muting with both hands to get it tighter than a frog's butthole. So whenever I was getting that down, I was focusing on the left hand. I wasn't really thinking about what the right hand was doing at all in terms of the picking pattern. I was just kind of playing whatever felt natural. And I started hitting a little bit of a speed barrier. I just couldn't really get it sounding clean and really consistent with the picking pattern I was using. So I had to do a little bit of strategery over here and think about what the right hand was doing and what Petrucci was probably doing to make it sound really clean. So Petrucci is a true alternate picking genius. He's a Steve Morse maniac, which means he can alternate pick his way through anything. Check out the intro arpeggios of The Glass Prison if you doubt his alternate picking powers. It's pretty insane. So this riff has a combination of some picked notes and some legato in it, right? The strategy going on with the picking here kind of reflects that alternate picking backbone by using what I refer to as rhythm picking. Rhythm picking is something that I used to describe whenever a picking pattern isn't necessarily based on economy of motion. It's based on where the picked note is falling in the measure or in the subdivision of the beat. Now, whenever you're alternate picking 16th notes, as John frequently does, Downstrokes end up happening on the downbeat and on the upbeat. So one and two and three and four and. And then the upstrokes end up falling in between the cracks on the E's and uhs. One E and uh, two E and uh, and so on. So whenever you take a look at this first figure and analyze where the pick strokes are falling in the beat, here's what you'll find. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So you have downs on one E and a for the first part of the riff, and then you have two E and a. So that segment right there is the real linchpin here. You'll notice it's a downstroke, then an upstroke, then another upstroke. Two E and a. It has to end on that upstroke because upstrokes go on the E's and uhs, right? One E and a, two E and a. Whenever you play it with that feel, it feels super rhythmic. Your hand kind of feels like it's always in motion and always in the groove, which is what's essential, especially at the higher tempos that this riff gets up to. I did a process that I've done with other riffs in the past that have really complicated rhythmic patterns or pull-offs or whatever in the middle of them, and it works great. Check this out. Try playing this riff so that even when you do a pull-off, your pick hand is making a motion as though it's hitting the strings. That way it's always in movement and always in the groove. It looks something like this. So even though it might be very wasteful to practice this with this totally uneconomic movement going on where we're moving the hand even when we're not hitting the strings, trust me, it's a great way to learn the benefits of playing with this rhythm picking kind of approach. That rhythm picking approach also goes for that lick at the end of the A section. And you'll see a similar idea there. One E and a two E and a. The upstroke's thrown in at the end there to keep it in rhythm and in motion. So that covers all the strategies I needed to beat the A section of the riff. Now let's talk about the B section. The B section starts off with that same open string pull off riff. And then ends with this boxy pentatonic phrase. Now 
Again, there's a few pull-offs and stuff in there. That's a pretty standard issue, you know, first and third finger kind of run. That felt familiar to me. I've played licks like that in a million songs. I didn't even really worry about the picking all that much for that one. I didn't feel like that really needed to have the rhythm picking kind of diagnosis to make it work. Just simply because I've played that kind of lick in so many other songs, I can play that in rhythm fine. So I didn't really obsess too much about that one. Not too bad to play. After that, it's a repeat of the A section. And then we have the C section of the riff. Now I was having a hard time making that jump happen. Jumping from that low B string to the D string in just the span of one sixteenth note is pretty damn quick. And then you have to navigate the position shifts and everything too. I started getting curious about if that's how John was playing it or not. So I did a little bit of research. There's some great footage of Liquid Tension Experiment playing this in Los Angeles, and you can watch them performing this song live. And if you watch really closely, whenever John plays that section, you'll notice, even though the camera is far away and not the best quality, that his hand jumps up the neck. You can see it's clearly not in the same position that the rest of the riff was. You can't tell what string it is, but you can tell it's higher up the neck. So after seeing him play it that way, I started trying to replay that last run like this instead, jumping up to the A string fret number 10 instead of the D string fret number 5. Same G note, different position. Now this is kind of one of those pick your poison situations. Putting it on the A string like that means that the string skip isn't as bad. It also means that your picking only has to stay on one string rather than pick a few on the D string, then pick a few on the A string. It just gets to sit in one spot the entire time. So it's a little easier for the right hand, but those position shifts with the left hand are pretty nasty. Let's check them out again. <laughs> And again, that's happening at 16th notes around 144 BPM, so it's pretty damn quick. About faster than a scalded cat, if you follow my lingo. So the first challenge you face right there is getting up to the 10th position and making sure you're nailing that note in such a short time span, because the only time you have to do it is right, right there. I guess it's technically two notes. You have the pull-off B and then the struck low B to get all the way up here to the 10th position. So as you're playing the riff down here, Pretty much as soon as your hand gets down to the third position to do the pull off, get your eyes finding that 10th position. Get your eyes here. Don't put your eyes here. Put your eyes where you're going to. Go where the puck is going, as Gretzky might say. And uh, keep your eyesight trained right there. Then whenever your hand shifts up into that position, you can just stop where your eyesight is rather than trying to track your finger with your eye. That never really works. Fix your eye on the 10th, jump into that position. So at that point, I had basically the whole riff under my mitts. The A section. <laughs> B section with the pentatonic run, back to the A, and then the last tricky C section with the position shifts. And then there was the minor teensy weensy problem of getting it up to speed, which is actually a pretty big problem. Men's asses. Ah! Yeah, that shit is harder than Chinese algebra, which is why we need our buddy, the metronome. When you got the basics down, but they're just not quite fast enough, that's when you need the little blue beast here, my trusty Korg MA30 metronome. Okay, our target tempo here is 144 BPM, which when you're playing 16th notes is pretty brisk. Okay. 
it falls apart really fast at those tempos. So I started working at a tempo a little bit more controlled than that, like let's say about 110 BPM. <laughs> Still a struggle for sure. Now here's the thing, a lot of people will practice a riff or a lick or whatever at a controlled tempo like that and that's a great idea. Speed is an extension of control. You cannot have speed without control. And the mistake that people make is that they'll play it at something like 110 for a little while and then they'll jump up to maybe 120. Cause that's only 10 faster, right? Not really. Here's what you gotta think about guys. Do a little math and magic with your buddy Uncle Ben here and give him some help because he was homeschooled and he's only got 10 fingers and toes. If I'm playing 16th notes at 100 BPM, right? That means that I'm playing four notes per beat 100 times in a minute. Last time I checked, that adds up to about 400 notes every minute going by. Now, if I take that exact same tempo and I crank it up by 10, right? It's only 10, that's not that many. Well, if I start playing 16th notes at 110 BPM, that means I'm playing four per beat 110 times a minute. If you do the math there, that means you're playing 440 notes per minute because we're playing 16th notes. Again, the metronome is only telling you you're going 10 faster. Your mitts and your mind are gonna be telling you you're actually adding in 40 more notes per minute. So whenever you're practicing with the metronome, keep that in mind. An increase of one BPM on this, if you're playing 16th notes, equals four more notes per minute that you're adding in. That's a pretty significant chunk. But yeah, generally speaking, if I'm working my tempo up with a riff like this, I'm gonna take it about two or three BPM at a time if it's straight 16s. <laughs> There you go guys, we did it. We conquered the first 15 seconds of this song. Only about six minutes and 15 seconds left to go. Should be a pinch, right? We'll call it a work in progress for now, but I'm gonna enjoy working my way through the rest of the tune on this beautiful, lovely guitar. Let me know if you guys would like to see some more seven string content here on the channel. I would love to utilize this amazing JP15 seven string from Ernie Ball Music Man and the fine folks over at Sweetwater, some mo fo show. I love that Sweetwater does these exclusive runs like this. They work with companies like Fender, Ibanez, Ernie Ball Music Man, all kinds of different companies, and they do these Sweetwater exclusive runs that you can only get from them. So I'm always kind of keeping an eye out on the site, finding anything that might be something that I can only get from those fine folks over there. So I recommend you guys do the same. Also recommend you check out that Patreon page over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. It's where you're going to get the tabs to go along with this and plus all the other goodies you need to lead a more better life. And I know you want to live more better, right? So be sure to check that out today. Patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Thanks so much for watching the video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and all that other good stuff that helps tubers like me out. And be sure to tune in next time. We'll be getting into something else really nice and shreddy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I recommend getting out and enjoying some beautiful sunshine before you get away from the computer machine. Get that guitar in your hands and get to work. Let's click it. More picking.